uh, one of my dream is uh, a kind of uh, drive simulator, uh, like uh, flight simulator. So atmospheric effects of fog, rain and snow will soon be added to the list of programs that will be able to be run on simulation computers. And of course, designers too will be able to use these effects to demonstrate to their clients how their buildings or product might look when completed. But it's the speed at which these images can be delivered which will ultimately determine the use of sophisticated computer graphics in CAD. This is Kawasaki Railway Station, just outside Tokyo. It was here that we journeyed to find out if these sorts of images could be produced more quickly by developing special hardware as well as software. Hiroyuki Sato is working with his research colleagues to try and incorporate more powerful computer graphics into CAD systems. He works for Fujitsu, one of the largest computer manufacturers in Japan. We asked him first what Fujitsu was doing in this area. Well, uh, we are developing a parallel processor. Uh, it's called uh, cellular array processor cap and it uh, is a uh, general purpose but somewhat oriented to uh, image generations and uh, we are implementing, implementing a ray tracing a ray tracing uh, takes much time so uh, we, we are trying to speed up ray tracing using cap system Traditionally, there's been one microprocessor that calculates the components of the image. This works down the screen line by line. This takes time, especially when you've a complicated set of algorithms, as you do for ray tracing. So Fujitsu's CAP system has more than one processor. It's called parallel processing. Each processor can be thought of as a cell, which generates a sub-image covering part of the screen. So the speed of performance increases linearly with the number of processors. At the moment, the system has 64, but Fujitsu has plans to increase this to 256. They also have ongoing software research. These computer programs aim to make it easier for a designer, who may not be a computer specialist, to create and alter the model. This bar has been rendered using another set of programs, but the image retains jagged diagonals. They know that it is possible to smooth them, but at the moment it takes too much time. Again, the changes are easy to specify. Using the CAP system, each of these changes only took a matter of seconds. Conventionally, each of them would probably take a couple of hours to generate. This enables a designer to modify the image interactively. The same programs can, of course, be used to model these chess pieces. Yet other programs can produce geometry moves like this. Fujitsu have plans to demonstrate the power of the system by linking it to a chess game. We have now three generations of CAP systems. The first system 
was developed in 1983. And the second version we are currently using uh, has more memory in each process. And the third version will have 256 uh, processes. It's much faster than our current versions. And we implement uh, our interactive softwares and integrate them. Uh, and uh, we need much more uh, computing power. Uh, our current version, uh, versions use uh, 16-bit processors. And uh, we are going to use more powerful processor uh, such as a uh, 32 bit processor or other, uh, anything. Uh, we, we are not sure now. Fujitsu obviously have some ideas up their sleeves, as you'd expect from a major computer company. But Pixar in America have also built a fast commercial graphics machine. Why did they get involved in hardware? The basic theory of computer science is that anything that can be implemented in software can be implemented in hardware. That's the basic. The historical and practical way to go is to do the algorithm, the software development first, try out the idea before you dare freeze it into hardware. But you know that you can always freeze it into hardware if you, if you, if you really think you have to take the, you, you need that additional speed that, that implementing in hardware gives you. And by additional speed, I mean, you know, an order or two of magnitude in speed. It's, it's serious improvement in speed. The Pixar image computer is very fast. Speed of processing is achieved by assigning four parallel processors to each pixel. There's the red, green and blue primaries, but also an alpha component, which can carry extra information, for example, for anti-aliasing, overlays or matting, the film process of adding a background to a special effects shot. When we finished the Genesis sequence in 1981, 82, uh, we'd computed it on general purpose machines, deck faxes and, and the sort of general purpose machines that you find around graphics labs these days. And it was taking a while for each frame, you know, like 40 minutes to an hour sometimes. And that's okay for video resolution production, but we were in the movie business. We wanted films that, that had richness of detail that was, that was as good as live action. And so this means millions of pixels, not just hundreds of thousands. And it means compute times of 10 and 20 times greater because we wanted a more model complexity as well as greater resolution. Happy birthday, Pixar, and happy first anniversary. You can come out and get a piece of cake and we'll bring the drinks around. Also, would you uh, sort of mix it up and introduce yourself to the new people? Around? Ed Catmull, Pixar's joint vice president, opening a party to celebrate the company's first year of independent operations selling the computer. They also found out today they had something else to celebrate. Luxo Jr. has been nominated in the 1987 Academy Awards. The owner of the company is Apple founder Steve Jobs. How did he feel about the nomination? I think it's the second, only the second time that a computer animated film has ever been nominated. And the first one was sort of a, uh, not a completely computer animated one. The computer, I just guess, just did the in-betweening. So this is the first time a truly computer animated film has been nominated. I think that's great. And I think it portends uh, much more of this stuff in the future. The, the future, I mean, the, why we want to implement things in, in uh, hardware and computer graphics is because the basic algorithms are very, very complex. And in order to get any work done in our lifetime, we have to get a speed up now and not wait for general purpose machines to finally catch up to us. Uh, I think they'll catch up to us, by the way, in about 2000 or 2010, uh, cost effectively. So we've got to drop it into hardware now. Rob Cook and I, who's one of the senior uh, scientists around here, um, invented a process for doing this sort of thing. And um, it's somewhat radical. Uh, we've written it up for SIGGRAPH this year, finally, after four years of thinking about it. Uh, but um, we're currently putting it in hardware. And it should enable us to make pictures uh, on the order of 100 to 1,000 times faster than a VAX. Uh, which means for the first time that the cost of the machinery is no problem 
is, is not the driving force in making an animated film. Uh, the rendering part now becomes cheap. And what becomes expensive is the people time, the animators, the, the model building. And so I'm going to turn my attention to that in the future. The animation at, at, a, at a high level of perfection is not economically feasible anymore. Like in the, in the heydays of Disney where there were thousands of artists that you could hire very cheaply, that was wonderful. Uh, maybe not for the artists, but for Disney. And uh, now it's, the only way is to do it is going to be with a computer. So it would be nice to get rid of all that trashy animation and get back to some, you know, Fantasia quality stuff. What our business is, is, is uh, visualization and uh, animation of complex processes falls out of that. And there are several steps in animation. One is to, you have to model what you're going to move. You have to animate it, which is adding, adding the time to the model. And then you have to render the result. Now, the rendering of the result, which has, it is the part that has taken everybody's best brains for the last 15 years. But it's the least human part. I mean, it's physics. You, you say, here are the light sources, here are the colors, uh, here's, uh, here's the textures we want on the surface and the kind of glossy finish or, or matte finish we want. Um, go render it, machine. You want that just to happen, just instantaneous if possible. So that the real work of doing a, a, a piece of art or a piece of scientific uh, education is, is the design of the piece and the, uh, the creation of the storyline and the, the look uh, and, and the, you know, back the human part. So that's where we're headed.